Hello everyone and welcome to another BI Consulting Services video. My name is Brad and today I'm very excited to be with you as we start the first video in a series where we'll be examining the ins and outs of Power BI from a beginner's perspective. In these videos, we'll be covering everything, including how you can use Power BI to connect to your data and use the dynamic tools within the application to create insightful and dynamic reports. We'll familiarize ourselves with the languages of Power BI through Power Query and Data Analysis Expressions, or DAX, that will enable you to clean up your data and add new measures and tables. We'll build out visualizations utilizing our data and talk through how you can optimize these to best communicate the story you want to tell. And we'll cover a host of other topics as well. But before we start digging into all of that, I want to try and offer my answer to the question, what is Power BI? These days, in your working life, and maybe even in your personal life, you've likely heard someone reference building or accessing a dashboard or reports in relation to data. Maybe you've tooled around in Excel a bit and are familiar with its ability to build charts and graphs to represent the data you've put into columns and rows. Well, you can think of Power BI as an extension of this example. In its simplest sense, Power BI is an application that allows you to create visual representations of your data within reports or dashboards in order to uncover insights based on key metrics and findings in the underlying data. One of the critical features of Power BI is that it allows you to synthesize data from many different sources. For example, you may have product cost data in an Excel spreadsheet, product sales data may be stored in a SQL database located in the cloud, your website and marketing campaign data may be housed inside your Google Analytics account, and your sales team's data may be stored in Salesforce. Power BI allows you to make connections to every single one of these data sources among many others, and synthesize that data into a format that creates relationships. You can then use this structure to build charts, graphs, and other visualization tools that highlight key performance indicators, like revenue and costs. You can build charts around sales numbers and dates to illustrate sales boosts while your marketing campaigns are in flight. You can categorize, quantify, qualify, and add depth and breadth to your data. All right, we're going to switch gears now, and for the remainder of this video, we'll look at how you can download Power BI, we'll take a quick look at the UI, and then we'll connect to our first data source. To download, we'll want to search for Microsoft Power BI in our browser, or you can visit the link I posted in the description. Once you've come to this page, we're going to want to find Microsoft Power BI Desktop, and then click the download link. This will launch the Microsoft Store, where you can click to download the application. I've already got Power BI on my computer, so I'm just going to open up the app. When you first open Power BI, you'll see this menu pop up with some helpful links. From here, you can start connecting to data sources, look back at data sources you've connected to recently, or open up other reports. There are also some links to instructional videos that Microsoft has provided that serve as great resources for getting started. Right now, we're just going to close out of this and we find ourselves at the canvas. Now, we really can't do a whole lot at this point without any data to work with, but let's take a quick look at what is presented to us. Up here at the top, we have our home ribbon where we can connect to different data sources by selecting Get Data or connect directly to an Excel workbook, Data Hub, which is where you can connect to shared data across your organization, a SQL Server, create our own data table through enter data, the Dataverse, and recent sources. Transform data leads into the query editor, which is definitely something we'll be getting into in a later video. And we also have an assortment of visuals at our disposal. If we click new visual, we see a template of a bar chart gets added to our canvas. Again, we haven't connected to any data sources yet, so we don't have anything to plug in here, but if we click on these visual types, we kind of get a sense of how these will render once we do have data. All right, we also have our text box button here that allows us to add some text to our canvas and the more visuals option. Now, these are user-created visuals that have been submitted to the app source and that Microsoft has tested and approved for use. We won't worry about the other tabs in the ribbon now, so the last thing I want to point out here 
is that we can actually customize our canvas. If we go up to View and click on Format, we see a new pane pop out, and the two settings I want to point out here are Canvas Settings and Canvas Background. If we expand Canvas Settings, we see that we have a Type option here, currently set to 16:9 ratio, and that's actually the current size of our canvas. If we open the dropdown, we have a couple different size options, including a custom option that allows us to dictate the canvas size by the pixel. Now, this will really come in handy once we start building out our visuals and populating our canvas. If we go to Canvas Background, we actually have the ability to change the background color. We can choose a particular color type or even browse our computer to load an image in as a background. You also have the ability to adjust the transparency of the background. I'm going to adjust our background to a gray color and lower the transparency to zero, and you can see how the canvas changes. Now, I kind of like how this gray background looks with the white visual, so I'm going to leave this as is. All right, at this point, we're going to go ahead and connect to our first data source, which will be an Excel file, and I'm going to use a file from a report I found in the Power BI service. Now, I'll go into what exactly the Power BI service is and how to access it in a later video, but you can use the same method to connect to any Excel file that you have access to, most likely on your desktop or in a shared drive. Now, what you see here may vary depending on the file that you've chosen. If you open a file that has multiple tabs within it or the data is formatted into tables within a tab, Power BI will allow you to select which tab or which table you want to import. And that's what we see here. By selecting each of these, we can get a preview of the data contained within the tab or table. Now, this preview isn't the entirety of the data contained within the file, but rather just a snapshot of the data so we can get a sense of what is going to be loaded. We can scroll over to see how each of these columns will be loaded into our report. At this point, we can either load the data if we're comfortable with how it's already formatted and we don't need to make any changes like altering data types or adding new columns or fields, or if we do want to make changes to the data within Power BI, we can click Transform Data to head to the Query Editor. Now, I'll be creating an entire video about using Power Query and the Query Editor, so for now, we'll just go ahead and load our data into the report. All right, we'll go ahead and stop there for now with our data loaded. In the next video, we'll take a closer look at the data source we just loaded and dive into more of Power BI's functionality. As always, if you have any questions about this content or would like the BIX team to cover a topic in a future video, please leave a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to stay updated on future videos, and thanks for watching.